<laughs> All right, we are now live. Yay. All right, this is our first annual, well, our first of the year honor study topic hangout on the new honor study topic, which is global perspectives, how the world works, and tonight we will be discussing myth and reality. Which is also known as theme one. So the goal tonight is what, just to uh, just to talk about the different themes, kind of shoot out some ideas, different things that chapters can discuss themselves, maybe some movies, maybe some books, just different ideas around this topic to help them explore. Um, I don't who wants to go first? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, fine, I will. Um, we think of myth and reality, honestly, they brought up a, um, the website Urban Legends, um, I believe it's called. Um, I, I think it's urbanlegendsonline.com. Um, that's where a lot of people have gone to look up these urban legends. But that, of course, is going to the myth side. Um, but it kind of makes you question about what is the difference between myth and reality and how is it cool for this to be based off of what do we each person is a little bit different in what they feel is myth and what is they feel is reality. So that kind of got me I was talking about some people like with this about this topic and everyone seems to have a different aspect about um, even something as simple as a black cat walking across your path. Is that a myth or is that a reality? You mean does a black cat walk across your path? Is it, like is it, if it actually is or is it that it's bad luck? Bad luck. Sorry. Uh, I didn't <laughs> Got to but, specify. Like, some people where they said flat out that if a black cat crosses their bat or crosses their path, whatever, they take salt and throw it over their shoulder. Once again, another myth. But they wear that if a cat walks across, something always happens to them. And if somebody else I know that owns a black cat, they just walks across in front of them no matter what, and nothing happens to them. Mm. So. Do they, and that maybe a question then after that is, do they make it their reality? Because they believe it's bad luck, then they focus on something bad that's happened to them. Exactly. So do mm -hmm. then, do they make their myth become their reality? Right. Ah, so that's a good one. So it's myth versus reality versus making myth your reality. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> that, that's, that's deep. That's deep thoughts by April. <laughs> Deep drops by April Milanowski. Um, well, uh, okay, so that's a good one. But you, so you mentioned looking that up on on the web and, and coming up with a website, and that makes me think of the website that I pulled out, which is Snopes, right? Snopes.com. Everybody goes to Snopes to find out if it's real or not. <laughs> I tell my grandfather, I'm like, all the stuff that you send me, it's not true. You know, he's like, oh, this this person, they they. They put a baby in front of a door so that somebody would come out to save the baby, and then they kidnap the person. Watch out if there's an abandoned baby. And it's like, Grandpa, it, it's not true. It didn't really happen. And I always have to send him the link to prove that it's not true. And he still won't go to it because he's just like, but it was on the Internet. The Internet doesn't lie. Of course it's not. Like, he is never wrong. The Internet does not lie. And you know what? To be honest with you, I've had this conversation with him. The internet doesn't lie. People on the internet lie. Okay. So yeah. So his his biggest thing is like, the internet doesn't lie. The internet doesn't. Lie. And I'm like, well, you have to figure out what what's the credibility behind the source that you find. Which and I think that's a, that's a key thing that um, from a myth versus reality is looking into the looking into the credibility of your source. And how do you determine what's a credible source and what's not? Yeah, uh, it's and that's very important that the people here realize that just because it says .com, um, if I remember correctly, I believe that means commercial mm -hmm. versus .org means organization. Um, where you're going, like Wikipedia, and I repeat, Wikipedia does not count as a reputable source. <laughs> Throw that out. There. Wikipedia is crowdsourced information. That's all it is. 
people can vote on whether or not they feel that it's uh, it's biased or not biased or if it's truthful, if it's not truthful. They don't have to cite anything. They can yeah. Can Wikipedia is in the source. And to be honest with you, you can't judge a website. You can't judge a website by its uh, extension either, because no. all of those extensions are available. I can go on GoDaddy and get a .org extension for you know a dollar ninety nine if I buy the .com. You know, <laughs> it's like. It's like the you know you get a you get a discount for buying in bulk, <laughs> so you can get the .net, the .org, the, the everything. Okay, can I bounce it off another stuff way direction? I think yeah, I think that's the purpose. Okay, good. Um, when I think of urban myth and legend, like myth versus reality, um, on the, the page itself on PTK or so the honors guide itself. It said, let me, let me read it, um, Da Vinci put secret codes in his artwork, George Washington wore wooden teeth, Charles Darwin claimed that a man evolved from apes, and, and so forth, but like we can't claim, we can't, can't really prove any of them, except somebody then later on went to prove that George Washington didn't have wooden teeth, but where I was kind of thinking was that Da Vinci made me think of the Da Vinci Code and the movie. Oh, Dan Brown book. Yes. Very nice. And started with angels and demons, went to the Da Vinci Code, and so forth. But it made me think of the Da Vinci Code, but it also made me think of National Treasure. They're similar, but they're very different. One's more of on a religious aspect, and one's not. But the Historical. Fact that, yeah. Finding all these clues, whether they were actually true or not. And then people are, of course, um, National Treasure, they wanted to go and steal the U.S. Constitution, and they did. And then it turns out it had a secret map on the back of it. Sorry, spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, is that true? Is that not? I mean, is our government really going to tell us whether it is or not, first of all? But, I have a feeling there's not a treasure map on the back of the Constitution. Oh, I'm, just, I'm just throwing that out there. Well, for the record, it's the Declaration of Independence. Oh, it is. oh hey! See, oh, you would have what? stolen the wrong document, April. <laughs> it would have been all over. <laughs> No, I was right. There is no map on the back of the Declaration of Independence or Constitution. Right, my bad. My bad. <laughs> Great discussion topic so far. Just yeah, walked into this hard, and I'm Kyle. like, okay. We're, we're working hard. Okay. So we anyway, so we just talked about the Da Vinci Code, um, which is Dan Brown's Dan Brown series. So there's the, like you said, Angels and Demons, the Da Vinci Code, and then there's the one about Washington D.C. After that. Um, yeah, it's true. Yeah, it you know honestly, it, it, as long as Tom Hanks is in the movie, I'll watch him. I'm good with that. Um, <laughs> you haven't watched the movie in a while, have you? It's Nicolas Cage. <laughs> is it Nicolas? No, Nicolas wow. Cage is a national treasure. Thank you very much. Yeah. And I'll watch those too. <laughs> so national treasure and the national. Da Vinci, yes, yes. Yeah. I love that Adam Sandler and comedy. Sorry, I mean I have seen those movies and they're good, but I just like something to laugh to. Yeah, to see there you see, it's too. Yeah. This is too heavy for Kyle. This is too. This is too <laughs> no, I've seen it. I, I like them, but I like something I can laugh. <laughs> so, um, so okay. So there, there's a, there's the books. There's the movies. So those are some ideas for chapters to be able to uh, to reference the the movies. Maybe have a movie night with their chapter. Bring popcorn. Popcorn brings people. Yeah. That's a lesson. Lessons learned. Popcorn brings people. Um, and then. Beyond that, there's uh, the the book. So you know, pulling out a section of the book, reading a certain chapter, you know, you on and on, so on and so on. There, what it, what could be a myth in there? You know, just referencing one aspect doesn't mean you have to reference the whole book, mm -hmm. but going off of one aspect or one part of the movie. So, the National Treasure, if you wanted to go for um, the Declaration of Independence treasure map, or Benjamin Franklin's glasses, or so forth. You could don't have to essentially like, go for the whole movie. Well, and, and what would be cool is you know because you know Monica Burr taught us something, right? So it's like it's it's not just the it's not just the topic itself, but how you ch how you twist that topic and how you how you can look at it from many different ways. So the Declaration of Independence having an invisible map on the back, you start getting into that sciency aspect of it. Is that possible? You know what you know. Could, can you replicate that, and what's that process, and you know all of all of, all of those types of things, and looking at that as an honors in action project. You could look into old ways of con 
stealing information, and there have always been those theories. Because in the movie, if remember, I think you sort of lemon ink or some invisible ink of some kind. You could look right. into other things like that. Exactly. And do some science project or something in your school to show some cool means of that concealing right. in old times. Go out to a go out to an elementary school, get some kids yeah. interested in science. Yeah. As your project, doing that kind of stuff. That's that's a myth Mythbuster stuff. Yeah. Let me be a Mythbuster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love that show. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sure that's on somebody's list somewhere. I shouldn't say that. Uh. <laughs> All right, we did our job. Christina, your turn. My turn? Well, I, I wanted to point out, the in, again, in the book, it talks about the book uh, The Power of Myth. Uh, explains that myths serve four basic functions. I thought this was the most interesting stuff. Uh, the first function is to realize the wonder of the universe and the wonder of humans and other beings in our universe. The second function of a myth is to explain uh, cosmology cosmological dimension <laughs> in ways that wed science and mystery. Third function is to validate social order. And the fourth function is most crucial to help humans live under any circumstances. And so to me, when you guys talk about the urban legends and urban myths, those kind of things, it doesn't necessarily, I don't think, fall into that kind of category because I think that's leaning more towards your worldview or something like that, whether it's religious or, or whatever. And to me, I think that, like I said, I was kind of thinking more along the religious lines at this point. And when it talks about validating social order, to me, that's, you know, however you're going to look at the world, that's going to be how you envision, you know, the structure and the hierarchy and laws and rules and all that kind of stuff. And so to me, I found that I, it made me want to read that book. So I, I may read that book. <laughs> well, I mean, it definitely is a good one to reference, at least. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, oh, so first function, realize the wonder of the universe and the wonder of humans and other beings in our universe. So basically, what does that mean? A, just a, an awareness? Okay. Just kind of making up stories about creation the awesomeness of the, of the world? Right, and, right. And how big, and the, you know, like you said, creation? Mm -hmm. Second function, explain cosmologic, cosmological <laughs> dimension. I wouldn't, I wouldn't explore that one because it's too hard to pronounce. If you can pronounce that, explore this topic. It's all for you. It's a little bit hard. You can't really go up into space, you know? Kind of hard. Well, cosmological, isn't that like uh, cosmetology? Yeah, I, I would immediately be like, oh, I'm an Aries. You know, I like long walks on the beach. That kind of thing. But okay. seriously, looking into the whole zodiac thing—that's a—that's a—that's a big one. That's a myth yeah. versus reality. I mean, how many people really? go to the newspaper every day to look? At, well, not, maybe not the newspaper. I was saying, not even the newspaper. Not the newspaper. How old are but, you again? Um, We're old. You know, the broken, the broken iPad. The broken yeah. iPad. Yeah. Where my kids are like, swipe, swipe. Why isn't this swiping? Um, but yeah, they go to look up their horoscope every day to see what kind of day they're gonna have. And then, once again, that brings back what Priscilla said. What they believe is what they make happen in their day. Right. So, mm -hmm. that's not going to have a crappy day today, or you will find your one true love today. Uh, well, they're going to try to think or Cupid shooting his arrows. Fun. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, did you? Ooh, that would be a great project. Go get like a go 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 to a fortune teller. That would be outstanding. <laughs> talk about talk about lots of fun. I'm sure my teachers would be on board with that, but it would definitely be interesting. Well, but I mean, you think about it. What's the big thing with um with the fortune tellers, cosmetology, uh, pen and tellers? You know, if if you're watching this at a school, go ahead and mute. But pen and tellers bullshit. <laughs> that was that was a great one. Um, you can you can unmute now. Unmute. Um, that was a great one where they talked about the, the the people who can talk to the dead and how they're really making it up because they're they're pulling information out of you without you even knowing about yeah. it. Right. But you know, and it's I'm just like and the the famous yeah, the musician. Or, I mean, the famous magician who went around trying to expose people like that. I'm trying to remember yeah. his name. Harry Houdini, I believe, wasn't it? Was it was it Harry Houdini who went around? I don't remember. He was I know a there great was one. He was a great magician. Yeah, I remember he went around with his spare time and trying to disprove all the fakes. He took very big issue with it. 
because it was something about being an illusionist, not really magic. Right, yeah. right, right, right. That's um, Chris Angel. He, he's he's an illusionist. Yes, yeah. not a magician. Then again, magician screams child birthday party to me. Yeah. Anymore, yeah. I wouldn't pay five hundred dollars to go watch somebody who screams child birthday party. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah. So cosmetology. Let's see. The third function is to validate social order. What does that mean? Somebody explain that to me in words that are about this thing. Yeah. So like kings and queens and I mean social order. So it's so you're the peasants and you're and we're we're kings and queens and we're the descendants of gods. Is that isn't that what it was? Someone? So we get to be kings and queens, and you have yeah. to be peasants. You have like your kings and queens, but then you also have like your your social order of like. Your um, your kings and queens would have your astrologist, your cosmetologist, your fortune tellers, but technically they're below them still. They're below even peasants, if I remember correct. But they still relied on them for their daily aspects. But it kept the social order because that's how a lot of kings and queens were able to make quote decisions of whether they went to war or not. Oh, their little seers and stuff. That's Game of Thrones right there. That's some Game of Thrones stuff right there with the redheaded lady. That's some good stuff. Ready? See now, now we throw, now we throw myth and reality. Boom, Game of Thrones. There we go. Oh, goody. There you go. That's gonna be my goal throughout this entire series: is pull everything back to Game of Thrones. Oh yeah. There you until, scary. April, until April when we get to watch it again, and then I'll be okay. I've never even seen it. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> There's a piece of my heart. I just broke it off for you. I haven't seen it either. Oh boy! Oh, sorry. Yeah. I've been meaning to, but yeah. I haven't. Oh, you better have seen this. You better have seen Game of Thrones. Nope. All <laughs> right. Oh. We, we found our honors in action program. My my service to the world is to get you guys to watch Game of Thrones. <laughs> I've heard it's really good, and I have families watched. I just haven't. I've been meaning to. We'll see. Here you go. The first reality. <laughs> To validate the social order, though, of dealing with myth versus reality, though, I think that can also go in the sense of those that who believe in the myth make it their reality, but they also put everything into it, and it's either a go or a no, to whether you exceed and you go up in the social class, or you gave away all your money and your earnings, and you drop to the bottom again. Hmm. There's lottery for you in gambling. <laughs> Well, there you go. Lucky seven. I will tell you right now. That's my lucky number. Seven what come eleven say? is not a true statement. Put way too much money on that. <laughs> so, but I will tell you, in gambling, they've got their own myths, man. They've got their own their own things where it's like if you're if you're throwing craps and the dice fly off the table, my dad pulls all his money off the table because like, that's bad luck. For Next too. thing you're gonna roll is a seven. You're gonna crap out. It's like they've they've got their they've got their their superstitions like you were talking about the beginning, April. Even just playing um pool, if you yeah. there are certain things you have to do. So there are certain players they have to touch their chalk to the end of their stick every time, and if they don't and they hit, they will miss cue, but they still blame it on bad luck. Same thing for a lucky close sort of thing, and then you've got all the athletes and their miss personal generally. Like they have to do something in their routine before they can actually do well in the sport. Or even right. or not shave their beard during the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> Don't change their socks. In League of Their Own, that's what that girl did. She didn't change her socks. Mm -hmm. Because she's like, oh, I'm not gonna we're not gonna win if she changes their socks. And everybody thinks she stunk. Oh yeah. So. I, I would I would lose more than not change my socks. That's the whole concept of jinxing someone is kind of a good example of that. Exactly. Jinxing, jinxing brings in the whole myth part, but it once again becomes the reality. I think I found a pattern. That's my pattern. The myths that become reality? Yes. Same thing for the clothes, you could argue that, because they believe they're going to do bad without their lucky clothes, and therefore they end up doing bad. Or, or they don't do their routine, and then they end up doing bad. Or how some even fans, how certain teams they're watching, but if they start seeing a trend of them watching and then they lose, they'll stop watching the game. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you don't have to talk to me about that, man. I'm a Saints fan. <laughs> <laughs> I've gone through all of them. Sorry. We've gone through all of them. 
But I again, like you know, all, like all the Cubs fans out there in Chicago, we feel we feel you're right there with you. You know, they're goats, right? The goats. The goat's a huge one for Chicago. <laughs> Billy goat. The the fact that the the farmer or whatever brought his Billy goat to the stadium and they said uh, they said you got you can't bring the Billy goat in here. So the so they so the the guy cursed them and said you'll never win you'll never win a World Series. So and and then they didn't they have won because of the Billy Goat. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, there's a lot of those, we and people really believe that. That's why there's the Billy Goat Tavern. Yeah, absolutely. We're trying to appease the Billy Goat with with hard alcohol. <laughs> There's all sorts of cultures that idolize certain animals or things. You could the myth about black cat walking across the street even. <gasps> That's a pretty common one. Don't cross the black cat. See, Most April, cats. you and Kyle. You're like you're like right there. What? I mentioned that earlier. Oh yeah. That know. was the very first thing joined. you said. You're okay. No, it's just validating validating right there. That's some good stuff. See. Are you in the point of like certain people considering um now this kind of brings food in, but certain delicacies as being lucky. Mm -hmm. So there's certain foods that are on like the black market, which that's a whole other aspect. But we can bring in. Um, some people feel that you know, kind of off. So cool. Mute again. If if you're not, if you get offended. Is this, um, yeah. Is I, this like the universal sign for mute? Yeah. <laughs> and then like unmute or like mute, unmute. Yeah. Okay. So, oops. Uh, yeah, close mute. Um, tiger's penis is known to um, help with infidelity issues. Wait, what? People, so what? <laughs> unmute. How would you know that? Like, how how do you find these things out? Uh, what kind of people do you have to run with in order to learn these things? That's just a, that was a cultural thing. It was actually um, it wasn't a TED talk, but it was. Um, there was something, oh, that's another reference to go off of TED Talk, by the way. Um, but they, they happen to bring up different um, infidelity issues, and someone was trying to get pregnant, and someone of an aging culture brought up and said, well, my family feels that if you eat, you know, a drop of or a, a bite of a tiger's penis, then you will get pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> you I don't know, know, but there's but there are those things, you know. I I mean, again, you know, from a from a, a medical standpoint, how many times have, have we just, you know, we we have all of these remedies, you know, and it's placebo effect, right? Mm -hmm. The whole the whole thing. If you believe that that you're going to get better, then you get better, and that's why when when pharmaceuticals when they test drugs, they have to have their placebos. They have to. It it has to be a, a study of placebo versus the actual compound and then you're gauging the difference between the placebo you're and the compound. Yeah. So that, that, yeah. Myth, placebo, reality, the real drug. Right, and then it's that difference between the two that actually shows whether or not the compound is, is, uh, is it works. If it's a, if and it's you can actually do medical those. You can actually, hospitals are supposed to, and pharmaceutical companies have to legally report those, so those are open to the public. Now, finding them might be a little bit difficult. Oh, no, but, go to the A.org. But, well, no, okay. clinicaltrials.org. That's a good Sorry. one. Huh. But, yeah, so things like that that they have to do, so you can look at that research and actually see what is going on. Zyrtec, before it was on the market, was actually a clinical trial, and I had a family member who was in it. Yeah, the um, pharmaceutical companies have no problem sharing that information, as long as it's good for them. you know, as long as it you know. And again, a lot of these you go to uh, journals, you go to medical journals, you go to uh, JAMA, the Journal of uh, uh, American Medical Association. Um, so JAMA is a great one to reference. Uh, each one of the therapeutic areas, each one of the specialties, you know, dermatology's got their own, rheumatology's got their own journal. You all of those, they'll all have studies like that. You don't know where to start. You can also contact either local areas, the CDC, or even contacting your local doctor's offices and explain to them what you're looking up or what you're trying to find that you don't want to bother them, but you're looking for a start or place to start. Right, absolutely. <gasps> or go to the library. <gasps> and actually, a lot of schools will have on the website, they have... Um, 
you know, those links for a lot of uh, articles as well. Oh yeah, and they usually have the uh, subscriptions because some of that stuff you have to pay for. So. Your school might have a database though that you can pull from. Exactly. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. If you go to the library, they may have access as a student to the large amount of databases, so it works out. That's actually a big tip that I've heard about the Honors in Action and the Honor Study program now, the Honor Study Topic program now, is to make friends with your library. Yes, very much. <laughs> Get with your on meeting your with the library time. <laughs> oh, wait, I'm sorry. Get him slash her on your side. I'm not trying to... Yeah. I'm trying to be sexist or anything. <laughs> I don't know. All the librarians that I've known, all the great librarians I've known have been, been, been ladies. They're and usually pretty nice. And, yeah, they're yeah. usually pretty nice and they're there to help you, so it works out. Yeah, and they'll go the extra mile. They know how to pull that stuff. There's actually, they, you have to go to school to be a librarian. There's a, there's like a real program and everything. There's a science of being a librarian. And a lot of them, before they'll even be hired as a librarian, have to have their masters. Yeah, it's yeah. I mean, they they're they're a great resource. Go to the library, and make a friend. Not even it can be leadership development a little. Um, if you go to schedule an appointment with the librarian and get to let the librarian show you how to do academic research and everything else, it can be a little development which can help you out later on when you're doing your write-ups. Absolutely. All right, Nicole, back to you. What's, what's on your list? Huh, me? Who? <laughs> I thought it was kind of interesting that they mentioned George Washington's teeth. <laughs> that um, they were actually made, his dentures were made of hippopotamus ivory and eight human teeth fastened, to, uh, fastened by gold pivots and held in his mouth by spiral springs. To me, that just sounds kind of painful. Yeah, a little bit. After going through all that stuff that I've been through the last year, that just sounds painful. Mm -hmm. I'm very thankful for the advancements in dentistry. <laughs> <laughs> so, so for for those who don't understand that reference, so you you had you had a whole you got a whole new set, right? Yep. I had everything pulled out. Whole new set of teeth. Mm -hmm. Show them off. Show them off. It, <laughs> They're beautiful. They're beautiful. See, and that's the that's the thing. There is myth versus reality right there. You, you, the yep. cosmetic. Which, by the way, we were saying cosmetology before. I think that's I think that's like medicine. I think that's makeup, isn't it? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Cosmetology. I don't, I don't know. Somebody somebody will comment on this video and go, "They're they're idiots." What were they talking about? I'll <laughs> just go. Yep. I, we didn't give our disclaimer at the beginning of this that it's we 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 are just getting together and talking like you would talk in your chapter. This we are not experts in anything. It should run across the bottom of the screen. Yeah, we need to get together to give you ideas. This is all with a grain of salt. <laughs> Do not quote us, please. <laughs> we we are as good as Wikipedia. <laughs> Actually, I think Wikipedia's got to spiel a little bit. <laughs> Just a little bit. At least they have disclaimers. Yeah. Um, yeah, but but this, that's but that's the thing. Like you know, what we're trying to do here, and what we are doing here, is this is a great example. If nobody's, you know, if you're new to a chapter and you're trying to, to lead a discussion and you don't know how it's going to go. Uh, this is this is basically how it would go. You know, just just tossing ideas back and forth and, and hearing people out. You know, if you're if you're actually looking for a topic at that point, you start writing them all down on a board and you know go through them at the end and say, hey, do we have any ideas about you know branching this one out or branching that one out or you know what's our interest? Mm -hmm. So just make sure um, you make your topic too big and you also don't want it too narrow. You're too big, you're going to have too much on your hands and you're not going to know what to do with it all. Too small, you're going to narrow your chances down to the point where you're not going to have options. Right. So mm -hmm. like back to Nicole's teeth before we before we sidebar. You know, it's the it's it's your the appearance versus the reality, right? So, in other words for myth, appearance versus the reality. Um What did you say, Kyle? 
Like, yep. I don't, you know. oh, we're losing you, Kyle. We're losing you. Oh, sorry. Yeah, he's just going in and out. But but that's the thing, you know. It's it's. But it looks good, right? It looks good. She looks mm -hmm. good. Looks and good. You, but the thing is, like you, you even told me, you feel more confident, right? Yep. You, you feel better. You feel more comfortable, and that's what it's all about. Yep. Well, because of that, you've made that your reality to feel better because you fixed this aspect. Can Love you me. guys hear me now better? There's Kyle. Okay, yeah, sorry, mic issue, I guess. I guess I was talking about beauty myths. Is that what you're talking about? That appearance of what one culture believes to be beautiful is not necessarily what everyone believes? We were not We were not speaking about that directly, but now we are, because uh, that's a great uh, topic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, there's a different beauty myths in all sorts of cultures around the world, but what one believes to be beautiful and one is completely opposite of the other. I didn't know that's uh, what you were talking about. Like the myth that blondes have more fun? Right not going into that. <laughs> <laughs> Brunette, brunettes are smart. Blondes have more fun. Redheads are what? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> See, there you go. Maybe you could do a whole study on going up to people and asking them a question based based on their hair color. That's actually a good way if you can ask people based off of, you know, what they view, what's their viewpoints of someone's hair color. Or they are, what's the know. square root of 72? Do, do brunettes know the answer more than blondes? No. <laughs> or how many people dye their hair? Is that a myth versus reality? Why are you going to call me out like that? Hey, I call myself out on that too, so... <laughs> <laughs> All right, Christina, what else is on your list? Um, da, da, da. I was looking again at the book list on page 7, and I was kind of wondering why they put the Superman book on there. <laughs> Anybody can answer that for me? <laughs> the Superman book? I'm trying to find it. Well, I see the Sherlock Holmes book, Mastermind How to Think Like Sherlock Holmes. Right above that one, The Rise of Superman. The Decoding Rise of Superman, Decoding the Science of the Ultimate Human Performance. Kohler seems to understand the mystery of human performance by exploring the frontier science of flow. flow. <laughs> this book discusses what is and is not possible for our species and what our limits may be. I think that gets back to the uh, the whole wonder of humans. The first function is to realize the wonder of the universe and the wonder of humans. Maybe, yeah. Maybe that's what it gets into. I mean, sort of like pushing the human limits and what is physically possible for a human to do. The whole concept of walking on burning coal and mind over matter and mm. those physical myths. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. Yeah, I like that, yeah. I also like how on that page they have a picture of the Loch Ness Monster in the background. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yes. If you haven't if you haven't referenced the new honor study topic guide yet, make sure that you do. Nessie is on page seven. <laughs> Very big fan of Nessie. Although it also looks like an Aztec or some form of a fear or stuff for an ancient culture. Yeah, I think that's some kind of a Mayan ruin. I think that's yeah. Yeah. Around there. Yeah. Yeah. Chicha Nita. That was a good place to go. And then I think that's also the, the other picture there is a phoenix. The rise of the phoenix. Yeah. Being mm -hmm. reborn, all of that. That's some good stuff. That's a good myth. Well, and that's a whole other topic, but that goes into religion. Is that a myth versus reality? But you have to be careful of what you approach and how you approach it with people. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of very timely topics when it comes to religion. You know, they get dangerous, but you know, you know, some of the some of the, the the deepest, you know, the deepest, most passionate uh, points are going to come from topics like that. You know, they're going to come from they're going to come from religion. They're going to come from politics, especially especially this year. You oh, yeah. know, uh, my my favorite my favorite with politicians is the uh, whole liar liar pants on fire rating, right? That they oh, what's that? There's a website that will that will grade politicians on what they're saying during speeches and whether it's true or false. Yeah, you know, and 
Some of them it's like, eh, half true, mostly true, or it's uh, mostly false, and then pants on fire. <laughs> so. Is that like PolitiFact or something like that? Ah, yeah, it, something like that. I'll look it up yeah. right now so I can see if we have it. That'd be great. Uh, I remember using that in government class back in the day. That would be a good one, even, especially with the political debates coming up anymore. And mm -hmm. Although, people just dropped out of the race as well, so. Ah, PolitiFact, yes. P-O-L-I-T-I-F-A-C-T. -I -I one word, PolitiFact.com. Yeah. Winner of the Pulitzer Prize. Mm -hmm. I knew them when they were just a little site. Yeah, they got a Pulitzer Prize. <laughs> You're so proud of the Internet when it starts to grow up, right? Good job. Good job, Internet. Um, yeah, so, I mean, politics politics can be a huge one. Uh, we were talking about religion and, and, and how each religion, and this is also in the honor study topic guide, but how each religion has a different um, uh, creation story. Mm -hmm. You know, how does, the, how does the world start? And, um, you know, uh, one, of the, one of the things that always resonates with me when I hear about religion and, you know, myth versus reality there's a movie called uh, the invention the invention of lying the invention of lying with Ricky Gervais first of all it's got Ricky Gervais <laughs> can go wrong. Um, but it's all about how he's in this world that 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 is 100% truthful truthful all the time and um, one day something in his mind just clicks and he goes uh, they, the, the woman says behind the counter uh, she's at a bank and he says uh, I'd like to pull out five hundred dollars. She goes, "You only have three dollars, three hundred dollars in your account," and he goes, "No, I have eight hundred dollars in my account." She goes, "Oh, well, there must be a mistake with the system. Here you go," mm -hmm. and she just hands it to him because nobody else could comprehend the lie. You know, they, they making something up, some, you know, not knowing that it's true and just saying it. And. Uh, at one point, he's um, he's talking to his mother, who's who's dying. She's in the project. She's just dying. She's passing away right then. And um, he starts telling her about how um, she's going to go to a wonderful place, and she's going to be able to see all of her all the people who have passed away, and she's going to be young again, and she's going to be able to run and jump. And and as she as she's you know, in the moments where she's actually slipping away, he says, you know, say hi to dad for me. You know, tell him I love him. And you know, she was afraid of dying, and I, I, you know, it seems like that made her feel better, but I think it also made him feel better going through the process of watching her die. It made him feel better to say that to her. Um, and then when he looks up, all the doctors and nurses are staring at him, they're like, really? Tell us more. What happens after you die? And then it goes into this huge, huge story of how, you know, he just knows all of these things, and he's like, almost like the next messiah. It's it's a really, it's a really interesting movie for this topic, actually. So, The Invention of Lying, Ricky Gervais, it's a good one. Interesting. It's got Tina Fey in it, right? Tina Fey, I think, is in it too. So, I could go wrong. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, it is. It, it is. It's a really good one. Ricky Gervais. <laughs> All right. What else is on the list? What else are we looking for? Myth versus reality. I don't think we got into the last part of this, um, the, the, the third function and then the fourth function, which he says is the most crucial and, and, we, over, and we just skipped over it, um, is to help humans live under any circumstance. So what does that mean? To me it goes back, for me anyway, I was thinking, like I said, of religion, you know, and that's, if you believe in God, that's, what's going to help you get through your situation that's you know and I think whoever believes in whatever they believe in that's what makes them get through good times bad times whatever perpetuating hope mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but I also think that goes back to what you think is what you believe right if you your believe perception of reality yeah yeah very interesting Campbell's explanation of the functions of myth cl clarifies why people believe myths. What causes some individuals to take the next step and turn myths into conspiracy theories, such as the one that persists about the United States faking the landing on the moon in 1969? 
um, or uh, the the whole JFK JFK conspiracy theory, you know, grassy knoll. <laughs> You know, did Lee Harvey Oswald act alone? The magic bullet theory. Mm -hmm. Those records are supposed to be released sometime soon. I thought, actually. Yeah, I thought it was a while back, actually. I thought it was supposed to be... Yeah. I'll look that up. Yeah. So, um, what are some other conspiracy theories? Because that's actually well, very interesting. Well, let's look them up. Hold on. Hold <laughs> on. Conspiracy theories. Why and then not? you're talking about Mythbusters. Mythbusters is a, is a great resource because they, you know, they do that whole, um, you know, it's all about uh, this is this is a, a, a known, you know, a common thing that people say, right? Like bull in a china shop. That was one of my favorite Mythbuster episodes when they did the bull in the china shop. They set up all of all of these big stands, all of these big. Uh, displays with uh, China all over them. And then they took this bull and they said, okay, go ahead and go in there. And the bull, he just, he like really carefully walked around all the China. He didn't break anything. <laughs> they broke more dishes putting this thing together than the bull did walking around everything. That's funny. And, she, and you know, one of the, you know, one of the, one of the Mythbusters, she's like, I am never going to say that again. That is a stupid <laughs> saying. <laughs> this is not true. Was any of the China uh, red, though, in all fairness? Huh? Is that another myth too? Is it That's China a red? myth too. Oh. <laughs> Silly. Silly Kyle. Actually they they disproved that on the same episode. So awesome. there you go. Yeah. Um according to like the Time website, um the conspiracy theories, it says um the JFK assassination, the nine eleven cover up, mm. Area fifty one and the aliens. Uh, Area fifty one. That's a good one. <laughs> Paul is dead, but I don't know that one. Oh, that's the when oh, you play Beatles. when you play the the it backwards. It says Paul is dead. Yeah. Oh, the Beatles song. What Beatles song is that? I don't remember. I know the myth, but that's about it. Yeah, it's the Beatles song. You play it backwards. It says Paul is dead. Oh. Sorry about the interruption. My network kind of killed out on me, so I'm back. That's okay. We missed you, and uh, and then you came back, so we were happy. Oh, let's see. I feel love now. Okay. It also goes on with like secret societies could still be the The Illuminati. The Illuminati yeah. Oh, yeah. the Illuminati. Freemasons. Mm -hmm. We can't say anything about them on, on this, otherwise we're all <laughs> we're not gonna make it. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> the Holocaust re re revisionism. The CIA. That's a, that's a good one because there are people who vehemently deny that the Holocaust happened. Oh, yep. Crazy people. It's like. Why? How can you be? You know, and, and that's that's a great one. It's like, and they talked about they talked about that in the um, Honor Study Prophet uh, mm -hmm. Guide, is how, it, people who truly believe that you cannot talk them out of the fact that, that this Holocaust did not happen. Did you talk about the fake moon landing one? Yes. We breezed over it. If you have any additional information to discuss, no. discuss with that, feel free. I just wasn't sure if you touched on that one. I'm working on an anti-media website, and these are um, kind of conspiracy theories that turned out to be true. Mm -hmm. um, the Gulf of Tonkin incident. The Gulf of Tonkin. T-O-N-K-I-N. Uh, North Vietnamese motor torpedo boat attacking a USS Maddox. Ah. Uh... I'm not a history major, but I'm sure there's somebody watching this video right now going, Of course! <laughs> God's talking! Why don't they know this? The Tuskegee? The Phyllis experiment? The Tuskegee? Yes, there you go. Okay. Uh, I'm kind of studying rural African American men who contracted syphilis. They, uh, the public health did a study on it. Ah, yes. JFK secrets until two. Th two, two th 2017. Mm. One year away. So this is a two-year honor study topic. There you go. <laughs> so they're going to release the JFK records in 2017. A five-minute captain will find the answer. It will be great. It will be national news. Fantastic. You heard it here first. And then they won't release it all. Another conspiracy. Yeah. Once, once again, <laughs> don't quote us. That's the whole point of the captain. It's a conspiracy. 
I don't want to know how to come up with some of these like names for this, like Operation Snow White or Operation Mockingbird. What? It's you have a big dartboard and you just throw darts. Stick with whatever one works. Well, yeah, Operation Mockingbird was um cold was during the Cold War. The CIA had launched a top secret project called Operation Mockingbird. The goal was to buy influence and control among the major media outlets. I think and we're getting clo too close to the truth right now. Well, those are true. Ha. There you go. Uh, what was the other? There's another myth that, uh, and, and this might be true. Yeah, the, again, it's, is this true or is this not? Where they uh, tried to get the goats to, for mind control? Oh, was well. In a movie with George Clooney? I don't know. That one. I'm bad with movies. And then uh, Hitler trained with trained squirrels to be spies. That was another <laughs> one. Yeah, I've, I've heard all these. These are these are real myths. Are they truths? I if, if Hitler tried to train squirrels, that I would just like to watch that. That would be outstanding. <laughs> that would be like a Monty Python skit. That'd be awesome to watch. <laughs> All right, ah. and this and this is what will happen to your discussion in your chapter. Get real, so let's talk now about how you pull it back, how you pull it back in. <laughs> so, so yeah, tons of conspiracy theories. Uh, the 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 moon landing. Let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, in the face of reality, why do we hold on to myths? So the inability that even when faced with the facts, you're still going to believe in what you what you originally believed in. Similar to no. most of the superstitions, some kind of myths where the lucky clothes come into play with that. I would well, think. in one of the MythBuster episodes, I'm going back to MythBusters again. But I mean, seriously, MythBusters. I mean, <laughs> the whole point of this, right? Um, one of the MythBuster episodes was the 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 Monty Hall, the Monty Hall theory, right? Where you have three doors, and they say, okay, pick a door, and you pick door number one, and then they eliminate door number three, and they say, okay, now do you want to stay with door number one or do you want to change to door number two? You know, mathematically, your odds are better if you switch to door number two to get the big prize. Because you were cho you were choosing from three, now you're only it, so your odds of choosing from three was that that you you weren't going to pick the right one. Two out of two out of three. Um, but uh, when it's half and half, it's better odds for you to change. But when the MythBusters ran that scenario, every single person stayed with their original their original guess of, of the first door. Every single person, none of them changed. And they were shocked by that because they, you know, obviously they're looking at it going, okay, what percentage is going to be success? You know, what's, what percentage means that, that this is a successful, you know, blah, 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 blah. And they, they're like, wait a minute, this just blew it completely out of the water. Every single person stayed with their original choice because it was like they felt like some kind of ownership over it or something, some kind of connection. Like they had made this instantaneous connection with door number one. So it was really, that was really interesting. Um, what is their function and how do they inform and shape how the world works? Pause. Go back to how people are saying with their first. They yeah. also to do that in school to not change your answer but to go with your first gut instinct. Mm -hmm. That's right. Don't overthink it. Mm -hmm. That whole idea of don't overthink it is don't... It, so... so when you compare it to the Monty Hall, which one's better? Don't overthink it or Monty Hall mathematics? Monty Hall. Uh, how and why do myths differ worldwide? So that's getting back to Kyle, your point about um, geographical beauty. You know, like well, being being really tall and big long blonde hair, great in Sweden. Not going to work well for you in Japan. 
Maybe. I don't know. I don't know those things. There was always the one about the freaky ear thing they would do in some African countries, where they'd have their, like, their earlobe really extended. There's that one. That, that would just not work in most places. No. Oh, in the, in the, in the, the necklaces yeah, that ne like, go up and extend their yeah. neck, and then they won't be able to live if they don't have those necklaces on? If you took them off, their neck would collapse? Yeah. Myth or reality, according to Ripley's Believe It or Not, that that's what would happen. And that's a new low. I'm not sure. I liked Miss Buster's more than that one. <laughs> uh, in what ways are myths and reality similar for all humans and societies? I think overall everybody has a, a an afterlife myth. True. You know, I think everybody has a has a plan for what's going to happen later on. Even people who don't believe in the afterlife, technically, that is a belief in the afterlife. If you oh, believe there's nothing, kind of loophole, man. if you believe there's nothing there, then there's still something you believe in to be there. Nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even atheists believe. That they believe there's, there's nothing. nothing there, so I still believe <laughs> they can't confirm. <laughs> All right. Well, that is a lot to think about. Um, Nicole, do you have any wrap-up words or anything that you want to add before we log off? Um, next month, we will be discussing theme number two, which is... It's the one with the panda bear. And collectivism. Yes, individualism and collectivism. How are the principles of individualism and collectivism manifested differently across the world? And that I'm going will... to get out my dictionary, my thesaurus, and I'm going to figure that out. Basically, is it better for the group or is it better for the individual? Which mode of thinking do you really prefer? And that is why I love Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> Renee, it's, it's, it, words about this big. That's how it works. <laughs> all right, good stuff. Well, all right, again, um, don't hold any solid and don't don't hold any stock in anything that we say. <laughs> Less than Wikipedia <laughs> here. Less than Wikipedia. Uh, and and hopefully conversation in your chapter goes uh, as well or or better than this. <laughs> all right, thanks so much.